get some azimuth readings on this one too. First, I'll just get a point reference marking. All right, so on this particular lane, this one's facing more generally north. And this one right here in my hand. Um, on the phone, it was saying 11, and on the Lenzenic compass, it was saying 3, 4 degrees or so. The phone was bouncing really crazy between uh, like 6, 5 degrees, 7 degrees. As you get closer, it get to 17. It gets 17, uh, 18. I don't know if it got as high as 20 or not, but it was constantly in flux uh, just over the course of just a couple of feet. Two or three feet right here is the distance that was measured. And that's what we're looking at right down there on the ground. So... Uh, there's nothing I had nothing magnetic on me or anything like that uh, you know metal to justify such weird readings um, uh, over here on this particular on this particular direction right here that one uh, pretty much came up the same on the lensetic compass and, and on the phone and I want to say that one was a 241 degrees I believe is what we, what we came up with 241 degrees so this is the general surrounding area as you look around um, I don't think you can spot any more structures in the area or what, what we think would be a structure and over here as well this is what the general area looks like coming here so it seems like there's some kind of um, some type of weird disturbance that affects electronics here. Not so much uh, manual lensetic compasses. The lensetic compass stayed pretty uh, consistent. Only electronics. Definitely is another tree that's been popped off and added to it. You can tell right here. That's where it's been broken. Yeah, I'm assuming that's where it, where it come from because that looks like <clears throat> that looks like more logical thing for a stump to come from. So then it comes on down. But I'm here to, to get an azimuth reading on it. So I'll get out my phone and I'll have a look at it. <clears throat> so let's just take this uh, recorder. And let's just leave the recorder. Oh, let's put the recorder down on the ground. Right here. dead on this tree right here 315 degrees but I need to get in front of it <clears throat>
321 if I hold it at the hip. Elevation 120 feet, 321 degrees, 320, 321. All right, so that's what it looks like. So let me put the phone away. <clears throat> and the significance of this structure, we call this one, and I call it the Tillman structure. And the, um, and everything in it definitely um, adds to the picture. It points to significant things that are in the green swamp. Each one of these leans do. And that's why it's, in, it's important. And so it looks like something else for sure, definitely since I've been out here last, has been added to the picture now. <clears throat> right here. So it didn't just break. It didn't just break and fall into the gap right here it snapped and pulled back some at least uh two feet i would say yeah. Still hanging in there though. Hmm. So when you look at these trees, you know, any one of these trees surrounding surrounding the structure, you know, oddly <clears throat> from the apex towards that one, you know, you're looking at uh, a good uh, a good 20 feet maybe. You know, and this tree could have just landed in any direction. You know, uh, logically, this tree could have landed in any direction. 360 degrees, it could have fell any direction. But um, <laughs> no, it hits the apex, and that's what is pretty cool about it. And I want to say, <clears throat> I want to say the 300. No, that's why I'm moving around again. It could be my phone, but I'm not touching my phone. My phone is still in my pocket and I haven't touched it, but I'm not saying that it ain't the phone. I'm not saying that I ain't touching the phone. But, um... <clears throat> Okay, we're gonna throw you on the ground. I'm gonna walk away from it. Okay. I am at least. I am at least uh, ten feet away from the phone or from that meter right now, and it's just singing away. I haven't touched my phone yet at all. Crazy, huh? <clears throat> huh. That's crazy. Let's back up more away from it. It's amazing. Yeah, and 321 degrees is, uh, you know, west, northwest, a little bit more than that. Strange. I mean, there's my phone right there. It's a new phone.
Let's see if the meter quietens down a little bit. It's moving some, but it's not. Anyway, it was right after I started filming the structure, actually. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, as I was saying earlier, that the structure, each one of these lanes point to a specific area um, that we know of, and definitely this one right here. That one's definitely pointing to a significant place. Uh, points to a creepy hollow. So I'm going to get on the map, I'll figure this out, see what kind of message is being given to me. Just curious to see how strong some of these trees are here. See if there's anything rotten. No, that tree is solid as a rock. So the surrounding trees seem to be solid. I guess that one just happened to have been the rotten one. <laughs> Does it work that way? I don't know. But there it is. And the meters. It's quiet. So let me get it back. And uh, we'll get on out of here. Okay, I had just gotten home. Phone's in my pocket. I'm just gonna repeat. I'm gonna repeat what I did out in the field. Okay. Try field meters doing nothing. Not going crazy like it was out there. And let me just walk around for for a few minutes here. <coughs> Certainly, it should be able to repeat. And do the same thing again. Let's see. Still a whole lot of nothing. The phone's still sitting in my pocket. Okay. Here it is. Not hearing it. Not going nuts. Okay. Funny though, but when I'm out when I'm out there, man, the phone was going bonkers. Or I should say the, the meter was going bonkers. You know, I come home. I'm on my, well, nah. But you know, I you know I try to give these things the benefit of the doubt and pretty much just repeat what I did out in the swamp, which was, you know, pick up my phone, put it in my pocket, you know, take the tri fuel meter, walk out to the structure real fast, and, you know, and just, you know, record the recordings. And so, you know, it goes nuts out there, and it's getting radio frequency from something, more than likely, like, you know, a big, big a big part of it might be coming from the phone but what's causing the phone to just you know explode like that and um you know so you, you come home and you know and you know you get out of the truck repeat the same steps again walk around hopefully you you're able to repeat the same thing but it doesn't and the only thing that i can think of is the difference of it at all is that you know is the location but there is, I wasn't that far from the river system, and there should be at least some cell reception in that area, and maybe the phone was just going into like a big search, you know, and it was just blasting, trying to find an, an area, and that's the difference between the two, and that, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to do a big blast search here, because maybe the, the signal's uh, stronger here, and so it doesn't have to do a search, so maybe that was what was going on. I don't know. <clears throat> But, um, crazy though, it's very interesting.
Go a little bit further. Go a little bit further. Pull in a little bit. Look oh, at oh. this. Wow, that is interesting. Hang, 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 hang. Go a little bit back. How about I just drive in? Yeah, drive in. Look at this. Just drove by and look what we found. And the tree bark is gone on both of them. See? It's almost like a deliberate message to say, because this is a hunter's camp. This little this little uh, nook right here is where hunters when they do camp. It's almost like a sign when you look at it as um, hey we know you're going to be here to look but we want we want you to know that knows what you've been doing we don't like which is the burning <laughs> I'm just making stuff up off the top of my head but it's almost like something saying in your face we don't like the burning you know I'm gonna go check the stumps So the, the bottom of the stumps, oops, look at this. Yeah, I'm checking the logs to see how well they're pushed over or moved around. Very spongy. So what I mean is, is it trees that just came down from the burn? No. Oh there. no, definitely. This berm was not hot enough. You know that? Yeah, it definitely pushed. See? I mean, look, That's where the roots fall. If the burn was really bad, you'd see the pine needles. The pine needles would be scorched. Yeah. Up at the top of the pine trees, they'd be scorched. And I don't, I don't see them being scorched. No. The other ones are still green. All around, it's still green. You There's some. Go, uh, which is not have my snake boots on. Yeah. Okay, this was uh, part of that tree, possibly, right here. Yeah, but look how it's cleaned. It is cleaned. Uh, there is a stump, part of a tree right here. Uh huh. And the tree did get burned. Um, but I don't know how much, I don't know. In other words, what I'm saying is, I don't know if the tree was down before the burn or down because of the burn. If you want to come a little closer, you can see. Well, it makes a perfect X. That's for sure. Hang on. Sorry. It's almost, it's almost that like the tree was over. It's almost like the pre tree was over and then the stump was left behind to burn. That's what it looks like. See. see what I'm we, saying? Yeah, that's the tree. See, it doesn't necessarily look like that's the reason why it fell over. It looks like I actually think the tree might have possibly been already over. Uh -huh. Maybe, I don't know. Oh, yeah, there's one, one scorched too. There's yeah. one that's been scorched too. But look too. how clean it is. It's like perfect clean. There we go. Yeah, so, okay, so if you think about it, right? If you think about it. Was this like that one right there? Because yeah. we have a subject. And but then, this one didn't. And then something comes along and the wind. And, and the wind pushes it. Or in. something else gives it a shove, you know, to make a. But you know, we have we have the X. We have one coming from that angle too. Right. So uh, this one survived the burning. Just curious. Just curious. No, it's very solid still. You gotta be. It's very solid yeah. still. But then again, you know, maybe, maybe the strong wind could take it out. But um, I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see if it's really part of that one. I mean, I, you know, I see the trunk there, but. Well, I see this one too. This one too. This could be it too, right here. This one is just super clean. 
it doesn't seem to be part of the same stump, does it? Right. I don't no, know, it just doesn't. doesn't. But, you know what? Interesting find. Interesting find. Oh, you found this one. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm going to take credit for it. <laughs> but it doesn't, for, I know I see the stump there. It just doesn't seem like it's part of the same tree, though. I would say, yeah, 230 degrees, magnetic. So we'll see if that has any significance. Um, it's uh, 115 degrees on one. Forty-two degrees on the other. So 115 degrees. So we had to shoot, you know, if it, have to look at on the map if there's any significance to it on back on back azimuth or not. to say 230 was the apex. Okay, off we go. That one's getting ready to drop too. Waiting for someone something to shove it over too. But you see how this tree is right? Where you see where the scarring? And see notice this one right? This is an example. Notice the scarring on this one, you're, and you're saying, ah, well, you know, it's just part of the control burn, All right? This one was part of the control burn, too, except for you see uh, the whole trunk scorched. On yeah. that one, the whole trunk's not scorched yeah. at That's all. That's true. No, it's totally clean. Yeah. So yeah. I don't, so I don't know. Up, up I, here is the shell up top. Yeah, so it, and, yeah, it, and it, this it, one over there is super clean. Yeah, so it found its way up the bark and just went behind underneath yeah. the bark and stuff, but... That one does has no res. There's no sign no, on that one. No, it's super and clean. super clean. Mm -hmm. Super clean. So let's take a look around. Is anything else super clean? No, it's not stripped like the other one. I think that one was already broke. So. I think that one was already broken and was not because of the burn. You know, if you take a look around. If you take a look around this whole area, you'll see no leaners, no trees that are collapsed over. But no, here, and this, and we've, and we just pulled in. We didn't, I mean, literally, we only maybe a couple hundred yards off the main road. It's almost like here's your little lure to come on back. Keep a little cup of cookie crumb. Here's a cookie crumb for you. Keep coming on back. You know, we knew we knew where you were gonna go. But this is interesting. And it's just like I said. Here, here's a little something for you. Keep coming back. We need you to keep coming back. Hey everyone, so I'm out in the green swamp after a really, a really bad and tough week for us and uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Well what I'm doing is I'm, uh, I'm training and uh, doing some Uh, man, I've been in the army so long, well, you know, ruck training, ruck marching. But um, no, what I'm doing is I'm uh, training up for a, an expedition that I'm going to be doing out west. 
with Crider, uh, with Crider Exploration. And uh, it's going to be very interesting, but part of that is uh, Robert asked everybody to go ahead and train up. Try to train up to 40 pound, at least 40 pound packs, go up to 40 pound, 40 pound, don't go, try not to go past it. But, um, yeah, so when you're 56 years old and you ain't been carrying that kind of weight, normally I carry about about 18 pounds, 20 pounds in the swamp normally. But uh, normally I'll never go up to 35, 40 pounds and then try to put in a bunch of miles, more or less high elevation. So yeah, you got to train up for this. And uh, it's just a lot of, a lot of uh, bear down, get the knuckles down and uh, do it. And you got to put the miles in. You got to train as you fight. No way around it. You got to put the weight on. You got to put the miles in. Got to train the muscles. And all that stuff. So, uh, tell you what, I, uh, I'm just doing four miles a day, just little by little. But I got a 30 pound pack on. I don't know if I told you that already. But anyway, um, man, I got this uh, different pack right here to be able to handle you know more weight uh, hopefully I get my camera center <laughs> you know to pack more weight and uh, man I got to honestly say this is an awesome pack it is an awesome pack it's a mystery ranch pack and it's uh, uh, what was that terra the terra frames what it was called the 50 liter terra frame I gotta say man it distributes weight really awesome I'm able to uh, I'm able to walk faster, carry a heavier heavier load, and my heart rate is uh, 10 beats per minute less than it was last week. And uh, I was training with uh, you know four pounds less weight, but man, I got to say, man, it's pretty it's pretty awesome. It distributes weight really well into the hips, and. Uh, which is what you want. You don't want it all in your shoulders. You just, man, you'll just wear your spine down. So I got to say nothing but kudos for this company so far. It's really an awesome pack. Got to say it's practically better than anything I had in the Army. And uh, as far as that goes, man, in the Army, man, the, we had Oalis packs then. Shoot. Yeah. When you're in your 20s, <laughs> you're trying to hump 40, 50 pounds try to go up to 60 pounds oh my god your back is really paying the price for that but I um, gotta say this is an awesome pack maybe I'll break it on down a little bit more show everybody they're very expensive though got to say that very expensive but man you know mmm awesome stuff so uh, let me make this uh, let me wrap this up real here right here and so I can maintain my speed keep it up so I'm gonna do uh, three miles before I take my first pause and uh, we'll talk to you we'll talk to you in a bit if I was a betting man I'd say I don't recall seeing it when I came in I'd say we got a snake on the road let's go look Yeah, that looks like a rat snake. It looks like a rat snake right there. And let's get a close-up of him. They grow really big in Florida and long. And they can bite you. And, uh... I mean... What the deal? He's not even moving or anything, you know? Don't look squashed. Looks pretty good. So let's leave this guy alone. Give him his space. He's uh, obviously taking a sun tan. You can see him better on this side. There you go. Yep. Looks like his belly is full of something too. About midway down. 
See, just hanging out. Oh, I didn't think I recall seeing him coming at me. Oh, how do you miss that thing, huh? I tell you. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to Florida. At least it's not a moccasin, but um, I wouldn't expect to see a moccasin out here on a roadway necessarily. Although they, I have seen them, but not typically. Oh, whoa! This is freaking crazy. I was walking out here. I was walking out here. Just I was walking back to my truck right now, and I freaking got shoved. I, my camera got shoved right here, behind me. It got shoved. Bigger than shit. I am freaking got freaking my hairs all look at that goosebumps on my skin. Look at this. And look what I see right here. Hey, I don't play that game. You got no permission to shove me, touch me, or do anything. Get off me. Crazy sh freaking green swamp crap. I'm leaving. Okay? Don't play games with me. Now I know what Beata feels like when she got her, the camera got shoved on her. I know fully good and well what it feels like. I ain't making this crap up. I still got goosebumps on my freaking arm. That's freaking weird. No, I haven't. I haven't had that yet. But that was exactly what happened to my wife when she said the something came from behind and shoved the camera forward. It it shoved it shoved so much forward, the camera it started to go out of my hand. That's how much it was being shoved. Not a daggum thing around me. So, I'm not going to get into it. I'm just, please tell the viewers what you just saw or heard, whatever. All right. In light of recent things that I've seen about these things, I'm on, I'm on the fence. I know Bigfoot's out there. I know there's something weird going on out there. But, yeah, Chris had me do a test that he did when he was out here. Um, and he said, this is the craziest thing. Watch this. Which... When we pulled in, shot off the car, I turned the RF meter on. It spiked how many times? Boom. Boom. It just, Boom. It just, it just went, kept, yeah. it went crazy. It went nuts. It went freaking big ping. Whee! Yeah. <laughs> For about two seconds and at then least. It, and then it stopped. And then it stopped. Right? Yeah. So we're sitting in the car. There's the radio. There's all the electronics. There's our phones. I couldn't get it to do it again. Right? Yeah. So I So <laughs> I'm thinking in my head. Well, but maybe it does it every time it starts. Before I can get those words out, Chris goes, now shut it off. And repeat it. Try that again. <laughs> Turn it on. Nothing. Goes up to the baseline. Yeah. And quiet. that's it. It was quiet like it is right now. Yeah, just like this. That's what it did last time. As soon as I, as soon as I turned off the vehicle, I reached over and picked it up. It just freaking went off the chain. Just, it was at 15 to 17 is what it was doing. Mm -hmm. Stayed there for like a second and a half, two seconds, and then whoop. Went quiet. No, you're not. That's this, I didn't check my watch. Not that my watch is electronic, but... Oh, it'd have to, it, it'd have, to have some juice to pump. Right. It. <laughs> so, we're about to go out to... He's going to show me something. Yeah. And we're, we're going to bring the meter, but yeah. we left our electronics in the car. Yeah, so. we're right here. We're right here at the uh, structure. That's where we are, so... That's that's where we're at. So, we're going to head out there, and I'm going to... I'm not going to say anything. We'll go let Max talk. Go so we're gonna let him look at it, and before I say things what, that I know, that's that's okay. always a dangerous thing. Dangerous thing. <laughs> Pointing a mic in my direction. Yeah, as you can tell, they did a control burn. My favorite thing that they do out here in the green swamp. Just, I love it every time they do it. Just burning the place up, you know. But oh well, you know. We gotta 
do stuff like that. I guess they call that management. All right, so this is the structure. I'm gonna let you have a look at it on your own. It's not something massive, but you're at your leisure. You're free. You got the meter with you, and the meter don't mean anything at all. I don't know why people get this idea that I'm not going to say it, but the meter is just examining radio frequency. It picks up electronics and it picks up um, magnet, magnetic. That is all it is doing, people, is measuring the electromagnetic spectrum, the amount of energy. It is a milliwatt per meter square measurement. That's what it is. It's all we're doing with it. It's just another device uh, that we take along. I do. I take it along. Have at it, man. Because my compass is electronic, I left that in the car. <laughs> so I can't see where this is. Well, I have to go get the phone then. I have to bring it, one. It I'll did, go get one, but... We'll, I'll, we'll do that after okay. this without it. And then... All right. Um, this does the thing that I call threading the needle. Right? Which is when a tree is put between two trees that close together. And okay. oftentimes a fork tree. And then it's through a second set, which I find a lot, where one tree goes through two trees. Mm -hmm. I find that interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I think the statistical probabilities of that, mm -hmm. especially in a place with very few <laughs> four trees. Like, These are all straight and, trees. And that's like your vantage point right here. That means I'll get out of the way. That's okay. And then I'm trying to figure out. Do you notice something. anything about this, though? I mean, you. You see the stump well, there. I and, see the stump here. Yeah, and I and, see that. And yeah, I'm and, wondering if that is that tree. Yeah, or not. logically, I'd say it is. Yeah, it's about the same size. Yeah, and these things do have a very big jump from the base right. to a few inches right. up, so they're much thicker at the mm -hmm. bottom. And so what I'll usually do sometimes, I'll say, okay, obviously it's a break. You know, was it was it was it rotten? So I'll just take the rotten the tree right next to it and just you know give it a. Yep. So give that tree a good shove. It's the closest tree yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty solid, huh? I, I'd hang mm -hmm. my hammock on that. But that doesn't mean my... that that doesn't mean that one was not rotten. Right. It doesn't mean. I would have hung my hammock on that mm -hmm. like 30 pounds ago. <laughs> so hit that tree right there. Push on that one too. Yeah, these are okay, that's pretty. More flex that's pretty in there, but it's small. But the base isn't moving. Um, okay, keep going. My uh. My snake gators are right next to uh, my compass <laughs> in the car. So, all right, this is, these trees are just leaned, right? So yeah, because they're- That's why they're sticking and not falling yeah, over. Yeah, they're not broke, they so, just- Technically, this thing now has a third, like, needle that it's threaded, because it's gone between those two. Mm -hmm. Is that one part of that stump above it? You mean the other one? Yes, yeah. you can see the stump. Right. So, I, I'm assuming your assumption it's from that one. Okay. Yeah. So this one must have gone first. Right here. Then that one, and then this one threading all three yeah. of those bees. Yeah. It's, it doesn't seem to be overly complex, and it doesn't seem to me it doesn't seem to me uh, that a person couldn't create it, you know, because they're small trees. Right. You know? Here's the thing: like people always say that, oh, well, that's that's man-made. This tree, right? Is, is mm -hmm. still in the ground. Yeah. If someone did push it, based on me trying to push this tree, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm six one. I'm two hundred pounds. I'd say it's fair. I'd say that's fair. But I couldn't push this tree over. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not saying yeah. I'm, you know, yeah, Lou I'm, Ferrigno or whoever. Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger. I get it. Yeah. So someone would need like come along and a rope. And some of the research I've been doing is looking into the bruising on trees. Mm -hmm. This, from what I can see, does not have any large areas where you can see where something has been like, wrapped around it to yeah, pull it over. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Which a, a yeah, person would need to do that. Block and tackle or something. Yeah. yeah. Pulley or some kind of leverage. Right. Pulleys actually make it easier. So, like, yeah. you come along. So, mm -hmm. um, then that one would have landed on that. Yep, that's I a break. I can see how that's perfectly natural. 
There is bru you can see some of the bruising I'm talking about where the two of those trees, actually the four of those trees, mm -hmm. roll together. Mm -hmm. Tree rubs and right burnished right bark. At, right at the apex. Yeah. So. Do you find anything that you would think would be unique? Odd? Odd or anything else? I don't want to get snake bit, so I got to look down a little bit. Yeah, better. don't get snake bit. I don't have no snake boots on, but. I can carry you out, but I'm scared of snakes. I'm not walking over to get you. No. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, you know, stereotypical, what we call a structure. Okay. Uh, and then, is this rubbing against? No, it's not. Okay. Right. No, it doesn't hit that tree. And there's nothing stopping this tree from just dropping on down. Yeah, that's why I was checking. It looks like it's touching that other tree over there, but it's not. It's about six, six inches up. Mm-hmm. Okay. But... You know, normally what I do in a structure like this, I just say, okay, let me just do a kind of a double check if a person would have came out here. And so far, the meter's done nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Um, what I normally do is I'll go around in a, in a straw, small structure like this that, a that you know, you have to give it the, you know, the benefit of the doubt. You know, could hunters do it or anybody joking around, could mm -hmm. they do it? So what I'll do is I'll just give a shove on all the trees in the structure. Okay. area and that's what i'll do i'll just say hey if this one was rotten that one was rotten and that one was rotten dang gum the chances are i'd get another rotten one at least one more maybe right. because whatever's making them rotten is probably going to make some more rotten yeah what was that was that your what was that electronic noise i i just like wheezed <laughs> is that what you hear that it sounded like a radio or something was that you no. wheeze again Okay, yeah, Was that might have yeah. been it, yeah. Hey, I'm allergic to something in these swamps, so. Yeah, so that's what I'll do. I'll just give a shove on all, I'll just shove on all these trees. I mean, that one's in, in water, but if you if you want, you want to give that one a shove, and can you make it over there, you know? Give it a nudge or whatever. That one, so that this one. This one, I'm going to break before I, before yeah, it but moves. that one's teeny-weeny. Teeny, that teeny, that teeny. one's got to be uh, movable. You saying I wouldn't be strong enough to move a thicker tree? Yeah, is that one rotten? <laughs> well, we're looking for a rotten one, is what right. we're saying. Yeah, no, this one's not rotten. I'm going to bet money that one's not rotten. And that one don't look rotten either. No. So out of all these right here in this one little group, we had three, you know, if a person did it, we would have to have three rotten ones in order to break them, because you're not going to break that that easy. Yep. And still no no budge on the meter. Here's here's one if I can say what I'm noticing this is the, from the, my. Uh, this is cool. This is interesting. Yeah. I, I would say it's interesting. So from talking to the tree guys. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the structures we see, bows, um, yeah. even X's, yeah. in burnt areas, come from you know it, it's fire damage. Mm -hmm. There's fire here. Yeah, they, they, they right. They I don't see it. evidence of char on these trees. And the fire didn't come all the way up. No, the structure plus the fire is so recent. Yes, the fire did stop. Didn't, but they don't look they don't look like they have charred bark. If you look around this swamp, you see it all the time across the street. There are pine trees with the charred bases. So this wasn't wasn't the results of fire weakening some trees and not mm. others. That happens. Um, so I don't I don't know. Yeah, you know, basically I kind of look at it as like this: if a person did it, chances are we would have to have at least uh, three rotten trees to where they all can make a structure, to where they all can kind of make an apex, but there's no more of the rotten trees in, in the in the little zone right here. Right. You know? Right. So, I mean, that's just an observation. I can't add to it or take away from it. It's just an observation. It's like it doesn't seem to be any more rotten trees that we can, you know, find here. I bet you I could probably walk around I bet you I could probably walk around a lot of these and they're not going to be rotten. We might find one more out there, you know. We're not in an area. There's a couple trees over. I can see one way out there that's yeah. over. Yeah. But I only see very few. Most of the other trees have hit the ground. Yeah. 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 So we call this one the Tillman structure. Okay. And it's 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 this interesting. But anyway, I'll shut the camera off. Have, uh, have you had readings at this structure other than the yeah but yeah but i had my phone with me because okay. i was taking compass readings and stuff like that and okay. sure you know a phone when i'm doing stuff with my phone yeah i might could do stuff but i was getting some pretty good interesting things but none of us have any phones on us right now so okay okay 
Yeah. This is also this is good because there's a lot of videos out there that are like blowing people. Oh, you're using that. You're using them wrong, or this or that. No, this. Whereas is, this is showing me, hey, this is what happens. Because I is, can't make yeah, an argument against it. This is purely a scientific happens. instrument yeah. going along on the trail, and and all you can all you can do all we can do is merely show you our observations. Right. And what you make of it is your business. I don't yeah. care. I just, you know, it's good to know what's going on so that yep. it can't argue it either way. It measures, that's right, and it measures uh, parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that's, you know. Yep. That's my business if I want to take it along. And why do I take it along? Because I find myself in, a lot of times, areas of high strangeness. Right. And what do you deem, what do I deem to be areas of high strangeness? Uh, getting shoved. <laughs> Uh, not seeing something shove you, getting knocks right up on you, uh, voices right up on you, getting breathed on, uh, getting stuff thrown at you, uh, all this stuff, getting all these things happening to you and not see what did it, you know. Mm -hmm. These are areas of high strangeness, and that's why I take the meter with me. People can make up whatever the heck they want to make. I don't care. And you're finding a, like a correlation between yes. those events and this. There's a correlation between the meter and when uh, you hear knocks and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not even saying it's a wood knock, but traditionally Bigfooters call it a wood knock. I don't, I'm not calling it that. I'm just saying I've been out here, and, you know, and especially Knox Creek, and right. you know, the meter started to rise, and then we heard the, the knock, and then the meter peaked and then it started coming back down again so there was like it started correlating to what was going on around us okay yeah which, a, yes a comp compounding of evidence yes which i try to tell people this over and over i don't know if they listen to me okay the knock is not exclusive bigfoot <laughs> it's not it's not in my opinion and it's not just exclusive bigfoot Right. But they do have opposable thumbs and can hold things. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, monkeys do it, apes do it, so right. that's Bigfoot running around out there. Uh, but, yeah, well, enough of my, enough of my okay. what I'm thinking. So I'm going to explain to you what it is. So I'm going to turn the camera off first. 